Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Saturday, July the 24th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's follow up with some comments in response to your comments on Joshua versus Usyk. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let's just talk about real life, because real life isn't clear cut. It's not mathematical, right? If I told you that Tom Brady would leave the New England Patriots and in his first year in the NFC, on a team that had not won the Super Bowl for several years with an MCL injury that Tom Brady would play Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay in the NFC Championship game, would beat him, then in the Super Bowl, would play the defending champion Kansas City Chiefs and Pat Mahomes and beat them to win the ring in his first year in the NFC, most people would have said that's crazy. But it happened. How about what just happened in the NBA? Right? Giannis not only beats the Brooklyn Nets, but then is down two games to none in the NBA Finals. Two games to none and comes back and wins the next four games. Folks, that series did not make it to a game seven. Now that's reality, right? In reality, you have to understand that sometimes public opinion is off. There are a couple of things among several that I've learned in life. In boxing, one of them is styles make fights. In life, it's that you have to think for yourself. Now, I made a video yesterday. It's successful. I thank all of the subscribers, all of the people who watch that video. But in the video, I made an argument that I don't even think is that clever an argument, which is that Alexander Usyk shouldn't be going off at a plus 205 underdog against Anthony Joshua. Right? I'm reading the comments. Um, one of them was, hey, when you said it out loud, Usyk wins one out of three. That sounds about right to me, somebody wrote. Somebody else wrote that I'm trying to upset Joshua like I upset Lawrence Okole. Right now, I'm not going to kid myself. I know these fighters don't know who I am. I'm a guy on YouTube who, quite frankly, is fortunate to get a couple thousand views, right? Contrast my view total, and I love my view total, right? I'd rather have an engaged subscriber base than a lot of subscribers who don't know me, right? But just contrast my subscriber base, about 2,000 people, right? I have more subscribers than that, but I'm talking about a typical video for me, right? With fighthight.com and some of these others. So I'm not kidding myself. Understand, I'm a simple person. I just want to beat the casino. I just want to make a profit. I feel that if I do that enough, I'll be able to keep my subscriber base. I'll be able to continue to share my thoughts with subscribers here on YouTube. I'm grateful for that. So let me just make a few points here, okay? I have posted today in my favorites folder here on YouTube the fight that I believe everyone should look at to figure out Alexander Usyk's chances of beating Anthony Joshua. Not doing well against him. I'm talking about beating him. It's Usyk's fight against Murat Gassiev. Murat Gassiev, by the way, since that fight, has had two fights at heavyweight. Neither of them have made the fifth round. Gassiev is going to be an absolute beast in the heavyweight division. 
Well, let me just say this. Let me challenge the audience right here. Right? And I know the audience has a lot of Anthony Joshua fans. I concede he's immensely popular. Look at Usyk against Gassiev, understanding that Gassiev is a pressure fighter who's better to the body, quite frankly. He's better deep in the pocket than Anthony Joshua. Right? Just understand that Gassiev likes to be front foot heavy. That's who he is. He chases you down. He knocks you down. Look at his record. Folks, what I want folks to do is to look at Usyk in this fight. Usyk's on his front foot. Usyk is a southpaw. Usyk is doing leg feints. You'll notice him bend at the knees occasionally. This is against a slugger. This is against a guy in boxing who calls himself Iron. A heavy nickname. Think Iron Mike Tyson. Moret Gassiev calls himself Iron. Usyk gets Gassiev on his back foot. You'll notice Usyk is fainting with his feet. You'll notice Usyk is fainting with his hands. He moves his hands up and down like this so you don't know when he's throwing punches. You'll notice Usyk is up in a position. This is early in the fight where he's trying to set up a straight left, his power punch. You'll notice, too, that Usyk has his right hand up. Let me challenge YouTube here. Forget the odds. Forget the public. What I want you to do, what I want you to do for me in the comment section of this video is to tell me the fight where Anthony Joshua showed that level of boxing ability. Okay, just go through. You can fast forward. You don't have to watch the whole fight. You can fast forward. Usyk's performance is so dominant. You can just randomly pick a round. First round, third round, sixth round. Just tell me here the fight where Joshua has shown this level of boxing ability. Right? You understand the level I'm talking about. It's undisputed championship level. Also, what I want you to do is to look at the size of the man. Right? Understand. Rod Gassiev, in his recent fight, weighed something like 230 pounds. I want you to see how big Usyk looks. Right? Just tell me whether you think that Usyk is too small to be viable at heavyweight. In other words, the public narratives sometimes are wrong. Right? You hear them and you shake your head. In my favorites folder, I also have an interview of Angelo Dundee. Now understand the fights he's been a part of. He's in Ali's corner when Ali beats Liston. He's in Ali's corner when Ali loses that legendary first fight to Joe Fraser. He's in Ali's corner when Ali beats George Foreman. Of course, he's in Ray Leonard's corner for Ray's big fights. Ray's comeback against Thomas the Hitman Hearns. Right? Understand, too, Dundee is in Foreman's corner. When Foreman becomes the oldest heavyweight champion in history, beating Michael Moore. Right? And, of course, in the interview... Dundee, who knows a thing or two about heavyweight boxing, talks about how big guys 
really big guys don't make the best heavyweights. Right? He, he talks about how he prefers what he calls a pocket smaller fighter because of coordination, right? My words, not his words. He also talks about how Sonny Liston, according to him, and keep in mind, Dundee prepared Ali for Sonny Liston, was only six feet tall. As Dundee puts it, Liston had a 6'10 personality, but Liston himself wasn't that tall, right? Also, look at Ali and Liston in the ring staring at each other before the fight starts. Ali, the mover, is noticeably bigger than Liston. Right? Now, understand, just, just ask yourself some basic questions because the odds are ridiculous. Right? A plus 205 is ridiculous. Who has the better legs? Folks, that's going to leap off the page at you. The minute you look at the Gassiev Usyk fight, leaps off the page at you, right? You and I don't have to be Angelo Dundee, right? We we don't have to be boxing experts who've been in the corner of an Ali or a Foreman. We can just be regular people, fans of the sport, who look at the Gassiev fight. And you realize there's a distinct possibility that it's Usyk hunting Joshua. That Usyk, who has the better legs, might be the one pushing the action on Joshua. Let me say this, too, about punching power. You can negate punching power with positioning, can't you? Is Joshua the same puncher on his back foot that he is on his front foot? Right? Think about this too. Much has been made of the Derek Chisora fight. Now I'm not saying Chisora beats Joshua. I'm not saying that at all. But understand, Chisora fought at a speed early in his fight against Usyk that Joshua never does early in a fight. Never. Also, if Usyk sets up a pocket like he does against Gassiev, and folks, I'm giving you the film, right? Look at Gassiev in absolute terror. At Cruiser, understand too, these weights are illusory. You make weight at the weigh-in. That's not what the guy regularly weighs. Well, let me just say, if Usyk sets up the pocket that he does against Gassiev, isn't this going to be a problem, stamina-wise, for Joshua? Didn't we learn from the Andy Ruiz fight that Joshua's defense falls apart in the pocket? Right, folks, I'm not someone auditioning to be on the zone. I'm not someone trying to be controversial here. I'm just trying to take advantage of what the casino is offering. Let me make another point, too. Much of betting is about the odds you get. Understand, unless there's a draw, I'm already guaranteed a profit for the Pacquiao-Errol Spence fight because the casino priced Pacquiao as a plus 350. Right? By the way, in my favorites folder, I have a video of Ronnie Shields. Ronnie Shields used to be part of Pernell Whitaker's corner. And Ronnie Shields' esteemed trainer says that the Pacquiao Spence fight is close. Right, close. Well, 
Let's get back to the Joshua Usyk fight. There is a possibility that Joshua, who's a gifted puncher, is right once in the fight, drops Usyk, that's all it takes a puncher, right, and wins the fight by KO. There is that possibility. If you hedge the Usyk plus 205 with Joshua by KO, you win that bet. But here's what I think I know. If this fight doesn't have a knockdown, how is Joshua, who's not a great boxer, right? You, you watch Joshua fights for power punching. You don't enter a Joshua fight thinking, oh, I'm going to see Joshua up 118, 111, right? That's, that's not who the guy is, right? That's an Ali type fighter, not this guy. Right? I just don't understand how this fight can go the distance. And short of politics, right? Short of curious scoring, like the judge who had Jamel Charlo winning by several rounds over Brian Castano, short of curious scoring, I don't know how Joshua can beat Usyk in a fight where there are no knockdowns. In other words, folks, I know the public doesn't see it this way. I read the comments to yesterday's video here online, and I know you don't see it this way. But folks, there is a boxing gap between these two fighters. Right? Joshua's a power puncher. Just like Joshua has the power advantage. Understand, Usyk has the boxing advantage. Usyk is far more advanced. So understand, it's too late for the fighters to suddenly decide to completely redefine themselves. Joshua can't fight like Derek Chisora. Right, these days, Derek Chisora can barely fight like Derek Chisora. Understand, Chisora is a guy who had David Hay in trouble when the two guys fought. But Chisora fades in fights. Chisora can't maintain his early intensity in fights. Well, understand, Anthony Joshua drops Vladimir Klitschko. Revisit that fight. Revisit two rounds. All I want you to do is to look at two rounds in that fight. Six minutes of boxing. I want you to look at the round where Klitschko gets dropped. Folks, he gets dropped early in the round. So then Klitschko gets off the canvas and Joshua starts flashing his left hook. Right? You can tell the punch a fighter feels is his money punch when he has another guy hurt and he's going for the KO. Joshua goes for the KO. So Joshua's throwing a lot of left hooks. You notice Klitschko's prepared for it. Folks, what I want you to do is to look at Usyk's right hand as he's going in on Murat Gassiev. Right? Usyk is conscious of being hit by left hooks. I'm sure Usyk knows the rounds I'm talking about in that Joshua Klitschko fight. The one that had Joshua beating a Klitschko who had already been dismantled by Tyson Fury and who had been out of the ring for more than a year. Joshua flashes a lot of left hooks. You'll notice that Klitschko is able to survive the round. In fact, Klitschko, after getting off the canvas, looks good the rest of the round. Then you'll notice the next round, Joshua's tired. Right, folks? I believe Usyk is not going to try to hide. He's not going to dance around like Ali did against Sonny Liston. 
right? Rather, what he's going to do is fight him like he fought Gassiev, right? Usyk knows he's a southpaw. That by itself is going to give Joshua problems. So I believe Usyk's going to come in. He's going to get Joshua on his back foot, relegated to the pocket. And from that position, he's going to outbox Anthony Joshua. Right? Joshua will try to throw some big punches. But understand, Joshua is cautious. What I also want people to do is to study Sonny Liston. Study his protege, the guy he helped train. Heavyweight champion George Foreman. You're going to notice that those guys, Liston and Foreman, right? Closers, finishers, right? Guys who destroyed you. Think Liston, Floyd Patterson. Think Foreman, Ken Norton for a fight people want to look at, right? Think Foreman, Joe Frazier, right? A fight that I believe is going to be similar to Crawford, Sean Porter. Well, just to understand, those guys actually had some of the best jabs in boxing. Right? No one talks about it. No one says, oh, great jab, Sonny Liston. Sonny Liston had a tremendous jab. Both Liston and Foreman had better jabs than Anthony Joshua had. Now, let me say this about Joshua. Joshua might develop into a Sonny Liston, right? No one knows what Liston's real age was. Joshua is a strong guy, right? Big and clunky, as I like to call him. He's a strong guy who now is refining his game. My point to you is, He's in against a finished product. Usyk, who's a little older than Joshua, is just a different level. Now, this doesn't mean that Usyk can't get caught with a big shot and knocked out, which, of course, hasn't happened because Usyk's unbeaten. But what this means is that if a boxing match breaks out. If this fight is filled with strategic slow rounds where no one gets knocked down, Usyk has the distinct advantage. Right? If a fight breaks out where the guys are just throwing haymakers, right, trying to land something big, then Joshua will have the advantage. As you look at Usyk against Gassiev, just ask yourself, how likely is that to happen? Right? In my opinion, style-wise, Usyk, style-wise, faced one of the toughest opponents he could possibly face at heavyweight. And that was Derek Chisora. Understand, nobody else in the division is going to come after him like that. Right? Think of the heavyweight, the big punchers at heavyweight. Right? Joshua's cautious early in fights. There are times when Joshua's successful early. That's when a Dylan White, right, is there hitting him in the face with a jab, daring him to engage. Understand, Dylan White doesn't have the legs of Alexander Usyk, right? Deontay Wilder, KO puncher at heavyweight, right? Wilder is low volume. Wilder fights feature a lot of dead time, right? You have to come to Wilder and allow him to be able to time that straight right hand. Right? Usyk didn't fight those guys. Usyk fought 
Chizora, who was going to be in his face from the opening bell. That fight, style-wise, is a tougher fight for Usyk, and Usyk won that fight. Then this fight, right? I'll also agree, too, that if you're going to take the title from the champ, you have to beat the champ, right? Ties go to the champ. I understand some judges are going to look at a round. They'll think to themselves, oh, that round is close, and they'll default to the champion. Right? But what I want people to remember is the Andy Ruiz rematch. Joshua understood in the rematch that he could not stay in the pocket with Andy Ruiz. This is after losing to Ruiz. We're talking about the rematch now. So look at the rematch film. Joshua is moving in that fight, isn't he? Has Joshua ever moved that much in any other professional fight? You understood that he did not want to be in the pocket against Andy Ruiz. Right, folks, what happens if Joshua finds himself in the pocket against Alexander Usyk? Then he tries to move away, like he did, from Andy Ruiz in the rematch. And what happens if the guy he's fighting has better legs than him? Right? I'm just telling you, I have little doubt, little doubt, that Usyk, who's being trained by Vasily Lomachenko's father, right? You've seen Lomachenko emphasize footwork, sometimes to his detriment, in many fights, right? The Teofimo Lopez fight. Usyk, who knows he has a foot speed advantage. Why? Because he can look at the same films we have knows that Joshua can't move away from him. Are you convinced that a guy who fights on the road for the majority of his fights, that a guy who fought Maris Breedis in Breedis' backyard, are you sure that a guy who won the gold medal in London who was not an Englishman, are you positive that Usyk is going to go into this fight thinking that he even has an uphill battle? I think this guy has looked on the film. And I think this guy has figured out. I'm the better boxer than Anthony Joshua. He can't move like me. I'm going to be throwing foot feints on him. He didn't want to stay in the pocket against Andy Ruiz. He's not going to come forward on me unless I slow down. Right? You're talking about a guy with faster hands. Usyk has the hand speed advantage. Faster feet. Usyk has the foot speed advantage. Better boxing know-how. You know that just by the way against Gassiev. He's waving his hands as if he's going to throw punches. Gassiev, a slugger. A guy who just beat Michael Wallace by fourth round KO. After a fight. That he won by first round KO. Both in the heavyweight division. Right? A guy with heavy hands found Usyk up on him, outboxing him. Maybe Joshua tries to throw left hooks to get Usyk off his left shoulder. But doesn't Joshua need room to throw the left hook? Floyd Mayweather had concerns, according to reports about Joshua's defense. He invited Joshua to the Mayweather gym, according to reports. Right? Joshua values what Mayweather has to say, but Joshua, you know, didn't decide to learn defense under Floyd Mayweather. Right? If Joshua's confident in his defense, why was he on the run the entire Andy Ruiz rematch. 
a guy with his punching power. Right? Understand, too, this isn't a voluntary fight. Understand the importance for betting reasons. Between a mandatory contender, a guy who you have to fight, because the sanctioning body has said, hey, if you're going to wear our crown, you've got to fight our mandatory. Right? Joshua has to fight Usyk. This isn't a deal where Joshua's thinking, hey, man, I need a payday. Um, you know, my dance partner over here, Tyson Fury, has been ordered to fight Deontay Wilder. I need a payday. Let's pick someone who I can look good against. This isn't that fight, folks. This is that dreaded mandatory contender fight. So, of course, everyone's going to sound confident beforehand. What fighter wants to sound like they lack confidence? Right? Joshua's going to tell you, hey man, look, I got this in the bag. What Joshua has told you is that he believes Usyk is tougher than Tyson Fury. Right? So folks, understand. I was raised in the Larry Holmes era. Right, my earliest memories of a heavyweight title fight involved Joe Frazier. Right, neither Larry Holmes nor Joe Frazier. And I'm talking about great heavyweights. Great heavyweights. Right, between the two, the smaller man had more power. Joe Frazier. Right, Larry had probably the best jab I've seen. Right, neither guy was going to win a body contest. Right? Anthony Joshua, if you put him next to Larry Holmes, you would say, okay, well, Joshua is the guy with the more defined body. Right? Understand, maybe boxing success doesn't rely on the shape of a guy's body. Maybe you can look a little flabby. Maybe you can be undefined and be a great fighter. Right? So I believe the public here loves a guy with a positive message. You hear about Anthony Joshua's gold medal. You see the guy. He's bigger than opponents. You look at the highlights. My goodness, punchers look great in highlights, don't they? Right? Let's give Joshua some credit, too. He's fighting real fighters. Vladimir Klitschko was an Olympic gold medalist. Alexander Povetkin was an Olympic gold medalist. Joseph Parker was a reigning heavyweight champion. Right? Charles Martin, for crying out loud, was a reigning heavyweight champion. Right? He's beating impressive fighters. Let me just say he has never fought a boxer as good as Alexander Usyk. Right? Never. Right? Unless he can impose his size on Usyk. Unless he can drop Usyk a few times. Look, if, if there are rounds where Usyk goes down twice and Joshua wins the fight on the scorecards with some 10-7 rounds, I'll be on here. And I'll say, yeah, you know, power is a beautiful thing. Joshua was able to, you know, not have slow rounds. You know, blow Usyk out. Impose himself on him. But if that doesn't happen, if the fight goes the distance, didn't the Joseph Parker fight go the distance, folks? Let's talk about a more recent fight so I don't get accused of cherry picking. Didn't the second Andy Ruiz fight go the distance? Folks, what was that? The fight before Joshua's last fight? If this fight goes the distance, do you think Joshua wins it? I don't. So, forgive me. I know... Some people think I'm trying to be controversial. Some people think I'm, you know, I want to give up the pleasure of these fake backgrounds, right? And of my history of making videos before packing crates, right? To 
somehow have limits on my time so I could travel to some network someplace and um, get a few dollars on some national telecast. Folks, I'm sorry. I, you know, I'd rather just make a bet, win, <laughs> collect, <laughs> okay? You know, I'd rather be here on YouTube in a venue with a fake background that I control, right? We're not trying to be controversial. If I thought that the favorite was going to win this fight, that's how I would play it. I don't. And the reasons why are evident in the usyk Gassia fight that right now is in my favorites folder here on YouTube. Right? Joshua is developing fighters age more slowly in the heavyweight division. Right? But understand, Joshua's still learning the game. Right? This right now is not a Larry Holmes and Ali level fighter, a Joe Fraser level fighter. I have another video in my favorites folder. It's Joe Fraser against Bob Foster. I want people to Google Bob Foster. This is one of the hardest punchers. One of the hardest punchers in light heavyweight history. And understand, Fraser didn't weigh that much for a heavyweight. Usyk is going to come into this fight, I'm sure, weighing more than Fraser weighed for the Bob Foster fight. What I want people to do is to look at Fraser's head movement and look at how Bob Foster, a big puncher, with Fraser actually walking him down. You can imagine Bob Foster wasn't accustomed to a guy actually trying to walk him down. I want you to notice how Joe Fraser is just in the pocket, hard to hit up top. Right? There are different levels to this game. Joshua barely has head movement. I, I'm not even going to mention Joshua head movement. Right? Joshua barely has head movement. You know that. Right? Joshua doesn't have the feet of an Usyk. Joshua certainly is not as good in the pocket as Joe Fraser. But yet, he's being priced like he is. Right? As I've said, when you have an unbeaten former <laughs> undisputed champion, and you hear that you're getting a plus 205, you need to take that bet. Understand, if Usyk was getting a plus 205 against Tyson Fury, I would have to have some money on the Usyk side of the bet. That's how ridiculous the line is. Understand, too, in my opinion, Usyk would give Tyson Fury a hell of a lot more of a problem than either Wilder or Joshua. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Please keep the comments coming. Um, I had to laugh on the DAZN one where seven people gave that a thumbs up. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't think Joshua knows who I am, right? There are many voices out there on both sides of this bet. Um, what's important here is winning the play. I like the underdog at plus 205. I'll hedge the play with Joshua by KO. That's how I see the fight. If either of those hit, I'm good. Hope you are too. Let me hear your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.